songs for you. Okay. okay, the first one. Okay. Boom, boom. One, two, three. Boom, boom, did the bad water, I'm chew. Boom, boom, did the bad water, I'm chew. Boom, boom, did the bad water, I'm chew. Universal health care is good for me and you. So boom, the hours on the end part of me, E.T. All of your Scottish Costa Rica, Canada, the island of Taiwan, they got it in Havana, to Rome and in Rome, it's only here I met. Operate. 
Raging Grannies love you all too. These next two songs, we need your help, so help us. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one is Clean Up the Mess. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. One, two, three. Oh, the U.S. healthcare system is a mess. A mess. Yes, the U.S. healthcare system is a mess. A mess. Oh, the system's really broken from Seattle to Hoboken. Oh, the U.S. healthcare system is a mess. A mess. If you think we ought to fix it, raise your hand. one's called Universal Health Care and join in whenever you feel you can. Okay. Oh, one, two, three. Oh, when we win, yes, we will. Universal Care, yes, we will. Oh, when we win. people were there. That's the I went to play at the playground to do things I like so much. Run with my friends, play make-believe, swing on the swings and such. I went to play at the playground and bullies were guarding the swings. They knocked over the slide, jumped out the sandbox, took away all of our this playground is run by bullies, and they're all so big and mean. But this playground was made for all of us, and we're gonna change this scene. 
song and if you're a speaker who's supposed to be speaking here then come on up to the stage don't be shy well, that occupy medical bus came up with sort of a lengthy answer to the question why occupy that was being asked uh, fairly frequently for a few months there because this is where they buy the politicians because this is where power has its seat because 99% of us are suffering at the mercy of the madman on the street. Because all of us are victims of class warfare being waged on us by the 1%. Because these greedy gangsters rob the country, leaving us without the means to pay the rent. Because the last time that we had a decent government was about 1932. Because we the people are supposed to run this country, but instead it's all run by and for the few. Because now we know the rich do not pay taxes, but when they need a hand it's us who bail them out. Because we suspected we lived in a plutocracy, but suddenly of late there is no doubt, so we're gonna stay right here. We're gonna stay right here because both my parents lost their savings because i have never opened an account because the interest on my credit card just doubled and now i can't pay the minimum amount because these budget cuts are just immoral when our schools are overcrowded as they are because there are no buses where i live but i can't afford to drive a car because so many of us don't have health insurance because the rest of us have it but it sucks because the rich are flying in their private jets while the rest of us are slogging for the muck because capitalism isn't working the system has just failed to produce because the one percent are prospering while the rest of us just suffer their abuse so we're gonna stay right here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna stay right here. Because 
because it has been demonstrated and believed that the winners are the ones who stick around because this world should belong to everyone not just the banksters who would smash it to the ground because we've noticed voting doesn't change things when the politicians are mostly millionaires because we're learning how to stand up like Tunisians like they did in Tahrir Square where a young man named Mohammed who was easy struck a match that lit up all the earth and all around the world the spell was broken and the movement for the future was in birth because there's only so much crap the rich can feed us before we figure out which side we're on because we've learned if we want our liberation it will only come if we stay here till the rising of the dawn so we're gonna stay right here we're gonna stay right here at first because corporations are not people because we just can't let them choose because if we leave our fate to them then all of us will surely lose because the climate clock is ticking and we can't just leave our world behind because corporate rule isn't working and it's time for humans hearts and minds because you can't take it with you because the rich just do not care because it doesn't matter how much you make but how much you can share because these moments don't come often because we want truly to be free because we know what really matters something called society so we're gonna stay right here what are we gonna do we're gonna stay right here we're gonna stay right here we're gonna stay right here all right welcome everyone I have to say throughout this planning process there's that little bit of you that wonders are people actually gonna show up for this event so I just want us all to give each other a round of applause because we made it happen my name is Jess Hoffman I am the event coordinator for this and I'm also the chair of the Mobilization Committee for Healthcare for All Oregon. We have come today together as healthcare advocates, citizens of Oregon, and uh, just all around great people to make a statement about healthcare. We want to celebrate our successes and we want to encourage our legislators to co sponsor the Affordable Healthcare for All Oregon Act. Okay? Before we leave, today, before we leave today, all of us must commit to make an appointment with our legislators, whether it's here, today, in the future, and the next couple of months, we all have to make a personal commitment to say, I am going to go in and speak to my legislator. I must demand that they co-sponsor and support this bill because we are on our way and we want to see healthcare for everyone, right? Yeah. It seems so obvious, but it's just, sometimes it's not. All right, so again, before we get going with today's agenda, I wanna thank everybody, everybody, first of all, but everybody who played some role or some part in making today possible. I wanna thank the folks out in Bend, Central Oregon, yeah. In fact, in fact, why don't we do a little bit of a healthcare clap as we go through these groups, okay? So the healthcare clap looks something like this. We'll say bend, two claps. Can we do that? All right, let's thank the folks in Bend. Let's thank the folks in Portland, Central Oregon, which is Bend, and all the other surrounding communities. Uh, <laughs> Eastern Oregon, LaGrande, Eugene, 
Coos Bay, Bandon, Albany, Corvallis, Salem, Medford, Ashland, who am I forgetting? Else. Eugene. Eugene. And everybody else in between. All right. And if I missed you, don't take it personally. I really didn't mean it. Okay. So with that said, we're also going to really work to make sure that we include everybody. Because after all, everybody in, nobody out. So do we believe we can have health care for all? Oregon? Si se puede. All right. Yes, we can. So, yes, we can. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, we can. All right. And now, to keep us going, I want to make a quick announcement. The Occupy Medical bus, as you can see, is over there, and they wanted me to let you know that they provide free health care to people. So go ahead, feel free, go check it out. Volunteer, this group's from Eugene, and uh, just see what they're all about. Okay. So, to kick off the rest of our event, we are going to have our first of many speakers. If you have, oh, I need to make a quick reminder. This is critical, actually, to something that we're trying to achieve. So not only do we want to encourage everybody here to make an appointment with their legislator, whether in district or in the Capitol, we want you to also fill out the evaluation. So if you have this in your hand, I'm a teacher, so I'd say, everybody take this paper in your right hand, make sure you open it to page number five. <laughs> not four, honey, five. Um, and you'll see, Right? that there is a Oregon legislative report and evaluation form. And why this is so critical is that we are trying to develop a report of what it is our legislators have to say, where they stand, and the direction they think that they are going to go. We know where it needs to go. So we need to figure out the work that we need to do between now, where we are, and the moment that we achieve health care for all Oregon. Si se puede! That's right. Okay. So, remember, before you leave today, turn your papers in to room 50, or if it's after 2, 2.30, because we're going to have to shift, to room 350. If you do not speak to a staff person, or you do not speak to your legislator, hold on to that form. There are sign-in sheets that are going around. If you're in the Portland area, David Young has created those sign-in forms. We really want to make sure that we capture the energy of this movement, of this, of this moment today, so that we can use each of our strengths throughout the rest of the movement. If you have not signed a sign-in form, do so, because that is how we are going to capture this and make this a reality in all of Oregon, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Si se puede! Yeah, okay. Our first speaker, so remember, turn in your evaluation forms or be prepared to have a call from somebody who will want to know what they said when you actually have your meeting, okay? All right, so first speaker is Wes Breen. Good morning, everybody! They told me three minutes and they said, Wes, it's three minutes. Some people don't want me talking any longer. Here's how I'm going to use three minutes. I'm going to use a minute to introduce myself. I'm going to use a minute to tell you about my daughter, Tanya Ray. And then our last minute, I want to talk about us Oregonians, okay? I'm 61 years old. In December, it was tough for me. On the 19th of December, my God, I'm a grown guy. Tonsillitis? I had my tonsils out. I did. Swollen? God, that hurts to have your tonsils out. Christmas was uh, cream of wheat. Cold cream of wheat would have been be was what I was eating. Warm would have been too much. When I went back on the 27th, two days after Christmas, they said, Wes, you have to walk through the dark valley, Wes. Wes, you have cancer. For the first time in 41 years, I do not have employment-based insurance. I was a fireman for 16 years. I worked with occupational health and safety for a number of years. And, you know, it's just the way the, the, they rolled out. And uh, the bills are coming in, and I, it's, I just don't have the money to do it. Okay, 
That is an introduction to Tanya Ray. My daughter, Tanya Ray. Oh my God, she was diagnosed in 2000 with leukemia. Yes, she was. Tanya, two years later, because she wasn't in remission any longer, had a bone marrow transplant at OHSU. And in fact, it was the, it was the, the graft versus host disease that, that did kill Tanya. Tanya died four years ago, January 31st, just anniversary year, four years ago, just a couple of days ago. I want to tell you what happened with Tanya. Nine years of struggle with leukemia, but you know the, the struggle that Tanya had? was with insurance companies to have access to health care. Every step of the way, they put a barricade for my daughter. They turned my, they treated my daughter like none of us, one of any of our relatives ever treated like a dog in an alley. We can do better than that. And I want to talk about the third part, my third minute, right now. And it's about us as Oregonians. I'm so proud to be an Oregonian, and I'm proud of who's here today. We are from all over the state of Oregon, and we are diversified. And you know what we have in common? We know as Oregonians that we can change things for the better and take back health care. We know that, don't we? Yeah. To wrap it up, brothers and sisters, here's what we're going to do. Right here in the state of Oregon, all four corners, we're working, we're going to do this. You know what we're going to do. They talk about Oregon. We passed that bottle bill years ago. They always talk about what we do in Oregon. And that's a grand bill. We did wonderful things. We did pass that bottle bill. Brothers and sisters, wait till you see what we do next. <laughs> And let's honor, let's honor Tanya Ray. Thank you. Thank you very much. Si se puede! Si se puede! Yes, we can. Thank you very much, Russ. I want to make a quick announcement to let you know that there is a group, Oregon Action, that will be walking around today and checking in with folks and asking them to... <laughs> this paper, asking them to call Senator Merkley and thank him, um, and ask him, and thank him for cutting medication costs and not Medicaid. Okay, that was the announcement. All right. <laughs> okay. So also know who your district representatives are. We have a map down in room 50, and if you need to know which room number they're in, these are circulating, and you can find out where your legislator is located here at the Capitol. Our next speaker is. Joel Miller. I love these signs that so many, I'm so proud of all of us here, but especially because of my faith tradition, that statement, everybody in, nobody out. And that really rings true to me from what I know about what's holy in this world. I'm the minister of a church. And before I was a, a pastor of a church, I, was, I grew up in my family's small business. So the experience of being in a small nonprofit or in a small business has made me a free market kind of guy. But let me tell you about that. I don't see any free market at work with our current health care system. No. I'm not sure what the technical term for it is. Free. 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 <laughs> Might be that. I can tell you it's a mess. It's a mess. First, in business and then in ministry I find myself constantly distracted from the work I have to do by health insurance problems instead of doing my business or taking care of my people in my church I'm constantly distracted by bureaucratic and overly complicated demands of just getting my employees health care and then the system of coverage I'm working with is inefficient expensive and flat-out immoral now, my church steadily provides its employees with good quality health insurance. I'm proud of my congregation. But even so, even with that good steady coverage, my employees live in terror of losing their health care coverage. We are all living in terror, and there's something wrong with that. And then there's faithful members of my congregation who are creative entrepreneurs. They would love to go out and start businesses. But you know what? They find themselves forced to stay in jobs where they have health 
coverage, health insurance coverage, and they're not starting small businesses. They're not starting small nonprofits because they got to take care of their families. Something wrong with that. Our system is such a mess, it's strangling our economy. It strangles our economy before it even gets started. Our health insurance is an economic mess. It's a moral disaster. As a people, we owe ourselves the utility of a publicly financed, economically sensible, and morally sustainable health care system. Annie Shao with Apano. Hi. <clears throat> Have you ever had a pain in your body that hurt so bad you couldn't sleep or eat or work but to focus on the pain itself? Yes. The constant throbbing pain, the sharp shooting pains, the kind of pain that pulsated and pounded, it burned, it ached, it kept you from doing things you enjoyed and it also kept you from being able to work. But you dreaded getting it checked because you knew how much it would cost. You felt powerless. And in the end, instead of going to the doctors, you went to the medicine cabinet. You took some painkillers and you called it a day. That's been the story of my life and the story of my family's life. Feeling powerless and in fear. When it came to taking care of my health, <clears throat> A few years back, I'd gone to get my teeth checked out, but the cost of the work was enough to buy me a round-trip ticket back to Taiwan, where I'm from, where there is universal health care. And so I did. The health care there is drastically different than here. I have no fear of costs when I feel frame, when I feel pain. I go see the doctor. It's never a choice be between being sick or being homeless. But when I returned to Oregon, I became fearful again. The comfort and ease was torn from me. I could only cross my fingers and hope that something else would not go wrong with my body and my health. Because I didn't know where I could go to get healthcare next. Last spring, when I was suffering from so much pain again, the desperation of feeling powerless led me to the medicine cabinet again. That weekend, I took eight pills of ibuprofen every four hours just to manage my pain to a minimal, and it still was keeping me from functioning normally. Urgent care would have been too expensive, and they would have just, just given me painkillers anyways. Looking back on what I did, I wonder what could have happened to my liver medicating at such a high dosage of painkillers. I know this choice between care and cost is a fo false choice. But if we had affordable universal health care, I could live free from pain and from fear. I can be empowered to live comfortably and productively. Health care is a human right. But without access to affordable care, we are all prevented from fulfilling life without fear. And that's why we need to have universal single payer health care for everybody. And we know how this goes. Si se puede! That's right. Okay, next we're going to have um, Dave Stranahan from Central Oregon, Healthcare for All Oregon, and Jobs with Justice speak on behalf of Jesse Guevara, who is currently having dialysis surgery as we speak. So. I'm winging it here at the last minute, but I have learned in working for this cause that I can do things that I didn't think that I could do, and I can do them for other people especially. And and so it's it's been great to to experience and grow. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my community and ask for things that at, at one time I wouldn't have, and I know the rest of you will do that too. Right now, I want to speak for a guy named. Jesse Guevara, a young guy over in Bend who has a family and he has a family with the small business and the small business cannot afford to insure for health care any of their employees or even themselves. And so Jesse's, who started out with the, a liver, uh, excuse me, a kidney condition that could have been treated, didn't have health care and he's the classic story 
of what happens to young people who are trying to run a business and raise their family and do it without having health care. And so his kidney condition declined and, and got more serious. And uh, even though we were looking forward very much to bringing him over from Bend to talk to all of you today and to tell his story, he's in the hospital right now um, in an emergency sort of situation. So he's the classic story of what, why we need to build up a health care system for everyone. He deserves it as much as, as anyone, and, and it's what we need to do for the people who come along in his place. So hope and pray with me that, that we're able to get Jesse healthy, healthy enough to come over here and tell his own story and uh, make, make the case why, why anybody, especially those most in need, need universal health care for everybody that we're going to get one way or another because we're going to work on it. Yes. Thanks a, a lot. me repeat after me we can fix it without a fight health care is a human right we can fix it without a fight health care is a human right now the main thing about us all being here that we here as a community what I want right now is for everybody to join hands join hands if you and hold your hands up to show your unity together Joined hands, hold your hands up, there you go. That's how we can work together, just like we came all across the highways to here today. We gotta heal the healthcare blues, am I right? Somebody say yes! Yeah.
Y'all repeat after me. We can do it. That a fight. Healthcare is a human right. We can do it. Without a fight. Healthcare is a human right. We can do it. Without a fight. Healthcare is a human right. Put your hands right here. All right. You hear that sound right there? That's us working together. All right, right there. That's beautiful. Because together, we're going to achieve anything. This is the land of the free, home of the brave. All we're saying is we want to be the home of the healthy as well. Am I right? Home of the healthy as well. Here we go. We can do it. Yes we can. Yes we can. We can do it. We can do it. Yes we can. Yes we can. Oh we can do it. We can do it. Without a fight. Without a fight. Healthcare is, Healthcare is a, human right. a human right. We can do it. We can do it. Without a fight. Without a fight. Healthcare, is Healthcare is a human right. Come on. Check this out. 
Woke up this morning with my mind, y'all say it. Up this morning with my mind, y'all say it. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on healthcare. We can do it without a fight. Healthcare is a human right. National Health Program. I've been, a, I've been an Oregon doctor for 28 years. In that time, I've worked for, I've taken care of people in rural clinics and the big university hospital. I've cared for people in VA, in HMOs, in the big, most technically advanced health centers, and in free clinics with donated supplies. And in almost 30 years as a physician in Oregon, what I've learned is that healthcare is a human right. I did not learn this from the faculty in medical school. I learned it from the people I've had the privilege of caring for over these years. I learned it from a young man with diabetes. His father lost his health insurance, couldn't pay tuition, dropped out of college. The boy couldn't afford the insulin he needed to, keep, to stay alive. He couldn't afford a physician to prescribe insulin for him. I learned it from a woman who cleans houses for a living with arthritis in her knees and climbs up and down stairs all day, comes into the free clinic in the evening to get some medication just so she can keep on working. I learned it from a middle-aged couple, lost a job, lost the insurance, lost their medicines, the diabetes got out of control, the high blood pressure got out of control, the heart trouble got out of control, and finally they came into the free clinic because they had no health care, no other options. I learned it from a man with pain in his abdomen, like some of the stories you've heard this morning. He put up with the pain, he put up with the pain until finally he could endure it no longer. And by the time he came to see us, his liver cancer was not treatable and he died. 
There's millions of stories like that. Any doctor, any nurse, anybody that does health care, all of you know stories like that, and it's not right. Health care is a human right. How many here have ever gone without health insurance because they finished school or between jobs, etc.? Yes. How many here have gone without health care, delayed health care because of costs, high deductibles? Of course. It's not right. About one in six people have no access to care. About one in three people who have insurance put off care or do without it because they can't afford the deductibles. 45,000 people die in the United States every year because they do not have access to health care. Over 500 people in Oregon, that's 10 every week, die because they have no access to health care. Not because we can't figure out how to care for them, not because we don't have treatments, but because we refuse to care for them. Health care is a human right. People tell me this is not realistic, that it's not feasible. Doctors, CEOs, politicians, they say, oh yeah, Gorman, of course I believe in universal care, but it's just not feasible. If I had a nickel for everybody to tell me it's not feasible. Of course, that's what they said about lots of reforms, about women's suffrage. They told Elizabeth Cady Stanton not to demand the women's vote because it would seem ridiculous. But it doesn't look so, so ridiculous in, in retrospect, does it? They waited 72 years for the vote. We've waited a hundred years since Teddy Roosevelt called for universal health care to get it passed here in the United States and in Oregon. So I want to thank you all for being here. It's time to tell our leaders that it's time to step out and have the courage like Michael Denbro and the other co-sponsors of the sponsors of this bill. Health care is a human right. 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 Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Because we're having so much fun, we had to change the schedule around a little bit because we're a little behind. So now we're going to have Representative Jennifer Williamson speak. Here she is. <laughs> Try not to fall off the platform before I even get up here. Hi everyone, my name is Je Jennifer Williamson. I'm the state representative for the west side of Portland. <laughs> And many of you were on the campaign trail with me, so I just want to say thank you for everyone who helped me get here. I've been a state legislator now for about three weeks, and I am proud that the very first bill I signed on to as a chief co-sponsor yes. was the bill for universal health care with representatives. Yeah. And for anyone who was on the campaign trail with me, you know I talked about it a lot. Um, you know, the, the cost of quality health care in Oregon continues to rise, and too many in our communities are left without the care that they deserve when they need it most. You're going to hear these numbers. You already heard them. I'm going to repeat them again because they're way too important not to repeat that each year 540 Oregonians die from treatable diseases because they could not access affordable care. That is outrageous. Last year, 34,000 Oregonians and 12,000 families endured personal bankruptcies caused by medical crises, and most had insurance when, when their medical condition began. The reason I care about this issue is my sister and her family are among those Oregonians. This is unacceptable, and we know we can do better. There are health care systems around the world, and even in our own country, providing quality health care to more people for less money than we do in Oregon. And Oregon must learn. Oregon must act. If we apply successful lessons to a new statewide publicly funded health care system, we can ensure every one of us has access to quality, affordable health care that we need and we deserve. Yeah. A single payer system would ensure that all Oregonians, including the sick, the poor, the unemployed, receive better services at lower costs without skimping on benefits or provider payments. No longer will members of our community be, communities be left out of an unsustainable and dysfunctional health care system. It doesn't require that we spend more, that we just spend smarter. A well-designed single-payer system would cost Oregonians and the government far less than the current system. It currently 
consumes nearly 20% of all of the money spent in our state. It's less frag it would be less fragmented, allowing us better to better understand our outcomes and manage all of our associated costs. You know, it takes courage to change our healthcare system, as you all know. Um, it's a decade, decades-old system, and it's leading Oregon to disaster. It takes courage to create a new health care system that provides for all of us and all of our families throughout our lifetime. However, I believe Oregonians are courageous people, and we can't afford to do anything less. Thank you for being here. I got chatting and I lost track of time. All right, so Representative Michael Dembro. Yeah! Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out. They said it would be pouring. They said nobody would show up. Once again, they were wrong. <laughs> okay. So tell me this. How many of you believe that every Oregonian has a fundamental right to health care? How many of you think that the system, or let's say the condition that we now have, gives every Oregonian that right? How many of you believe that the Affordable Care Act and the, uh, the, the public exchanges, the health care exchanges in Oregon, are going to guarantee that right? How many of you are willing to do what it takes to secure that fundamental right for every Oregonian? And you are part of a movement, a beautiful movement. And you have come to the right place. Yeah. Now, why is this the right place? Is that because the solution to our health care tragedy is going to be solved by the legislators in this building? No! How about by the governor? No. no. It's going to be solved by a million people in the state of Oregon. This will happen by the people of Oregon demanding change, organizing for change, and voting for change. And that's why we're here today. As a result of the uh, Federal Affordable Care Act, we cannot have a single-payer system in this country, uh, in this state, before 2017. Okay, that's a bad thing. It's a bad thing, and it's a good thing. It's a bad thing because we need a system like that today. We needed a system like that yesterday, right? But it's a good thing because it gives us three years to develop this movement. It gives us three years to develop the Health Care for All Oregon system, one that's been well-researched, that's right for Oregon, and that will be supported by the people of Oregon. It gives us the next few years to build a movement, a movement for victory. Right. So we have a legislative concept. It's legislative concept 1914. Easy to remember. It's the beginning of the Great War. Um, and that articulates the, uh, the Health Care for All Oregon Act, uh, which builds off of House Bill 3510 uh, from last session. You may remember that House Bill 3510 uh, had uh, 11 co-sponsors on that bill. Our goal for this session is to double that number of co-sponsors. How many of you think we can do that? Well, let me tell you that including Representative Jennifer Williamson, who just spoke to you, uh, who's my co-chief sponsor on the House side, and Senator Chip Shields, who's the chief sponsor on the Senate side. We now have 19 co-sponsors. And 
I'd like to call them out so you can acknowledge them. Some of them are here. Uh, others were here and have had to go in for, for other meetings. But um, my good, uh, my own senator, Senator Jackie Dingfelder. Yeah. Representative Jules Bailey. Yeah. Representative Phil Barnhart. Yeah. Representative Peter Buckley. Yeah. Representative Lou Frederick. Yeah. Re Representative Joe Gallegos. Yeah. Representative uh, David Gomberg. Yeah. Representative Mitch Greenlick. Yeah. Representative Chris Harker. Yeah. Representative Paul Holvey. Yeah. Representative Val Hoyle. Yeah. Representative Alyssa Kenny Geyer. Yeah. Representative Jeff Reardon. Yeah. Representative Carolyn Tomei. Yeah. Representative Jessica Vega Peterson and Representative Brad Witt. So, so we're three co co sponsors short. Sarah Gilson. Sarah Gilson. But I know that before this day is over, we will have at least 22 names on this bill. We will introduce the bill, and it will be given a number, and you can all follow it. We will have great hearings in the House and in the Senate this session. We're also going to have a bill this session that will authorize a formal study of health care financing systems by national experts that will help us to nail down the best configuration for Oregon, much as has already been done by the great state of Vermont. <laughs> But, brothers and sisters, the real work here is not going to be done inside this building. It's going to be done outside of this building, all around the great state of Oregon. By you and by wonderful organizations like Healthcare for All Oregon, Jobs with Justice, Physicians for a National Health Plan, all the groups that are going to be working together, labor unions, uh, social justice organizations, all working uh, to, for the public good. Because getting this, this, the system that we want and need will ultimately require a vote of the people. Ideally in the November 2016 election. Now, to win an election for a bill like this uh, in Oregon requires a million votes, roughly. 900,000 a million votes. Wow, what a daunting uh, prospect. <laughs> Especially because we need those million voters to withstand the barrage of negative advertising that you know is going to come, and you know who it's going to come from. You know, the brothers said... This is going to be without a fight, but I hate to tell you, they're going to be fighting this. We don't necessarily need to fight back. We need to organize. Right? I mean, look around you. We have about a thousand people here, right? Okay. How many of you think that in the next year, you can get a hundred people to sign a statement saying that health care is a fundamental human right. And of those hundred, do you think you could find ten people who could get a hundred themselves to sign such a statement? Foster, where's Foster? All right, so... we can. So I was an English major, so I'm not really good at math, but a thousand times ten is ten thousand. And 10,000 times 100, no, no, yeah, no. Anyway, anyway, it's, it's a million. So how many of you share this vision and are willing to commit to doing the work that it's going to take? Then let's go forward and organize this state. Everybody in, nobody out. What do you think, everybody? Do you think we could do that?
Grezgausiak? Grezgausiak. <laughs> She's a nurse. <laughs> Close. Actually, Nadine Griskoyak, I'm a registered nurse. Any other nurses out there? Yeah! Shout out to all the nurses. And we are speaking for the nurses that can't be here today or won't be here because they would lose their jobs and therefore their health care. That's the type of situation we are in in this country. Fear? And wouldn't we all like freedom? Isn't that what our, one of the tenets of the United States is? Freedom? We would like the freedom to have health care. And um, as a nurse, I say I am ashamed that we all don't have health care. I want to be proud of our country, much like they are in the UK or Canada, where they have access to health care and do not have to worry about being bankrupt if they go to the emergency department. From one illness, and I have plenty of people that I work with that will not go to the hospital anymore because of the bills they have received in the past that they can't pay. And I think that's a travesty. Actually, I know it's a travesty, and we have to do better. And we have to do better sooner than later because people are dying. And as a nurse, I find that it is appalling to, that we, in, to, in 2013, that we are even having to have this conversation. But I have to tell you, I am extremely proud that you are all here today and that your voices are being heard and we are showing people that we can do it and we want it. Yeah. First, health care for all Oregon and then health care for our nation. Yeah. Next, we have Bill Whitaker. Okay, you all know why we're here today, and uh, you've heard very clearly some of the things that we need to do. Now, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Everybody has either received an envelope like this, or you can get one at the registration tables or in room 50. We need not only your time, we also need your money. In order to build a movement across this state that's going to win, we've got to have dollars. Now, every dollar counts, but we need $5 bills, and we need $10 bills, and we need 20s. And for those of you who have the possibility of more, we need as much as you can do, everyone according to your ability to give to this movement. So. Please, we've got some people who are circulating through the crowd. Fill out your donations, take out your wallets, open up your purses, put some money in this form, in this envelope, put your name on it so we know where it's coming from. And if you can, make a pledge. We've got lots of people who are making a monthly pledge, some $5, some 10 We've got somebody who's making a $100 pledge. Yes. We need as many pledges on a monthly basis as we can possibly get. We need you. We need your dollars as well as your time. So give, give until it feels really good. Thank you. <laughs> Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, we can. All right. So next we have Representative Dave Gomberg. Well, how exciting it is to see a sea of red out there, everybody. I am David Gomberg from Lincoln City. And, uh, and out on the Oregon coast, as many of you know, our options for health care are more limited. Our options for insurance are more limited. And the expenses we pay for all of those things are higher, higher than we see in a lot of the metropolitan areas of the coast, or around the, country, the, the state. And we've talked out here, you've heard about the bills, you've heard from the physicians, you've, you've heard about the organizing efforts. I want to tell you a personal story. I want to tell you a personal story because it's personal for all of us. So I'm out here on the Capitol steps and I'm going to tell you about my colonoscopy. Yes. I had a colonoscopy. 
colonoscopy, you should all get one too, but that's not the point. The, the point is on my 50th birthday, I got a postcard from my insurance company and it says, you know, men of your age should really go get a colonoscopy. And I thought to myself, well, my first reaction, happy birthday to you too. <laughs> But I went to see my doctor, and I said, should I get a colonoscopy? He says, yeah, it's a good idea. I said, how much does it cost? He says, about three to $5,000. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll pay for it with my insurance. He says, it's not covered. But he said, come back when you have some symptoms. I got some symptoms, and I came back a few months later, and he scheduled me for a colonoscopy. He said, how do you want to pay for it? I said, with my insurance. Oh, it falls under your deductible. Well, now we've, got, now we've got free screenings. We've got free screenings, and I went in for my colonoscopy. I went in for my colonoscopy. I was in there for five minutes. The doctor writes down on the form, all clean, no problems, eat more fiber to prevent diverticulitis. <laughs> and the insurance company circled the word diverticulitis and sent me a bill for $3,500. Now, you know, I'm a small business person. We insure our employees and it costs us thousands of dollars every month and they can't afford to use that insurance because of the high deductibles. And even when you go in for a free screening, my goodness, you could take your lawnmower in for a tune-up and before they did a repair, they would call you to tell you what was involved and what it was gonna cost, right? But not when you go in to get your colonoscopy, $3,500. It took me six months to unravel the mystery of why I was getting charged and to get it taken off my bill. And I'm a guy that, that has an MBA, I'm a guy that runs a small business, I'm a guy that works in here and writes budgets for millions and millions of dollars. Six months. What would it be like for anybody else? Hell. That's right. That's exactly what it would be like. So what we need to do is we need to organize. We need to get involved. We want to make sure that health care is affordable for everybody, that insurance is available for everybody, and it's understandable for everybody. So, so that's my story, and I know you've all got stories too. We've got 19 co-sponsors on the bill, and I want to turn you loose in this building so when you go home today, we've got not 19, not 25, we need 90. 90, and this is going to cruise right through. So let's organize, let's make a difference, let's wear red on every hall of this building, on the east side, on the west side, let's all make a difference. Thank you everybody so much for being out here today. Okay, so now we have a little bit by the awesome aunties. performing for us. This is, so it's always, playing at rallies is always so fun, despite the, the, it's always like, you know, terrible reasons we're always coming together, you know, but uh, it's nice to come together, you know. So I always love rallies because I get to see all my friends. And, yeah. I don't have health care, by the way. I have no health care. And uh, I do have CDs, though, that, and which these things are related, actually. Maybe, someday. My, my, uh, my wife and my daughter both have health care because they're citizens of other countries. I 
daughter gets free education because she's a citizen of another country. They pay for her to go to school here, actually. That's weird, huh? Did anybody vote for Obama hoping that maybe we'd end up with universal health care like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, this song's for you. I mean, maybe some of you never had the idea. I turned on my TV, though it was hard to see these men who would be head of state. What a great country from sea to shining sea. We watch the Republicans debate. Newt stood with his third wife and said, you bet your life the president is a red. He wants to tax the rich a lot, take your limo and your yacht. He wants to have the banker's heads. And if he gets in again, he'll paint the White House pink and then he'll hire Chavez as his VP. And we'll be right on track to give capitalism a sack along with the insurance industry. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. That's the chorus, you got it? steps and wheelchair ramps. He'll subsidize windmills and maple syrup. He'll cripple industries with eco-friendly policies and pretty soon we will be just like Europe. He'll shut down oil wells, give out solar cells to every home in Delaware and Illinois. He'll ban logging in the parks. He'll send the works of Karl Marx to the homes of every American girl and boy. He'll abolish pesticides. He'll be giving out free rides and free lunches, too, in his high-speed trains. He'll start lots of public works full of union perks. He'll fill all the cities up with bicycle lanes. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? He'll cut military spending, our empire will be ending, and soon we'll be invaded by the whores. He'll legalize all drugs, give away beer mugs and hookahs to every child, and Korans. He'll ban religions from the schools, give 40 acres and a mule to every person who makes less than 50 grand. He'll close Guantanamo to torture, he'll say no, he'll make us all drive electric cars. He'll reinstate the fair doctrine take off that damn flag pin and he'll put Rupert Burdock behind bars if only it were true if only it were true I'd be so happy wouldn't you if only it were true 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 I'd be so happy wouldn't you I was really warm and now I'm kind of cold, so I can't wait to put that jacket back on. Um, okay, so here's the deal, everybody. We believe, we are here for a reason because we believe healthcare can become human right, right? Querer es poder. When there is a will, there is a way. Can you guys say that after me? Querer es poder. When there is a will, there is a way, okay? We will find that way if we work together. That's going to be key. We have to remember, as we have conversations, that we have to keep the feelings. We all have stories. I'm a substitute teacher. I haven't had health insurance for four years. Got kicked off twice, once at 23, once at 26. Okay, This is something that so many of us can share in different stories. But we have to keep that reality in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls. Every conversation we have so we can organize people, move people, to want to actually take action, that is up to us as individuals, as people, as Oregonians, as one human family, that's up to us. Remember that. 
I'd like to say a couple of extra special thank yous, okay? I'd like to shout out to Betty Johnson. If any of you know Betty, woo! I met Betty four years ago when I did my internship with Mid Valley Healthcare Advocates, and she has probably been one of the most inspirational and supportive people I've ever had in my life, and I really appreciate that. Mike Huntington, Joe Zarr, individuals, individuals who, without them, and their years of hard work, we wouldn't be where we are now. I know sometimes the work seems tedious. I know we want to get frustrated or we start to feel frustrated, but we have to keep a positive attitude. We have to know that at the end of the day, what we do today, the work that we feel, the experiences we have, we will reap those benefits tomorrow. Right? Yeah. Okay. What happens when we take our eyes? What happens when we see barriers? What happens when we see obstacles? We take our eye off the prize. And in this case, ladies and gentlemen, that prize is healthcare for all people. Yeah. All right? So, to conclude, because we're always over time, we'll eventually get it down one day. Um, to conclude, we're going to have people break out into different sections. In your packets, remember, let's go ahead and take them out in our right hands. Open it up to the second or third page. I might have given mine away. Oh, there we go. Always prepared. Um, and there are different areas around where cafeterias are available. In Gowdy Hall, over here in Willamette. Oh, and also, real quick, this is totally random, but I have to thank Hector Osuna, my boyfriend, because he has been incredibly patient with me throughout this process, just sitting there watching me work all the time. So, <laughs> thank you, Hector. Okay. Portland Group, Portland Group. Over in Gowdy Hall, two blocks down, you'll see there's a map. Okay, those arrows are going against a one-way street because you will be on foot. It's a large enough area, okay? I encourage you all to go to these areas to meet with people who are in your district. If you don't know what your district is or who your legislators are, there are maps available and you can also go to the uh, Capitol website and look up and identify who your legislator is. Meet together, talk about what it is you wanna say. We have packets with guidelines on talking points and the messages that we want to get across to our legislators. Enjoy yourselves, have fun. The Eugene groups, the Midwest, the Valley groups are over in, um, I should look at my map. <laughs> the revenue building. In the revenue building are the Willamette groups. Here in room 50 are, are uh, the coast groups in Salem. And in the labor and industry is Southern, Central, Eastern Oregon. You don't have to go to these places, but I would encourage you if you want to meet other folks who are doing the same work in your area to go there. Okay? Everybody give yourself a round of applause. Woo! Si se puede! Si se puede! All right. Oh, and remember, when you guys are loading on the buses, do it quickly because there's going to be a lot of buses coming through and we're going to have to facilitate a lot of people. Please remember to turn in your evaluations and report forms to room 350 is likely going to be the room. Anything else? And thank you very much everybody for coming. Have a great day.